welcome to Kids Church Online. I am so excited that you're here today because this is the big Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. I'm looking for Easter eggs and stuff. There's, are there anything inside of here? You must get off the set. Seriously, I'm looking for Easter eggs. I'm leaving some candy before the kids get here. There, Josh, this is a virtual kids church. There's not going to be kids here today. Fake candy? So what, are you like replacing the candy with broccoli? I, no. Josh. Onions, maybe? Plastic candy? Josh. Like this nose right here? <laughs> Josh. Um, Josh. Yes. This is about the resurrection of Jesus. It's not about bunnies and candies. It never was about bunnies and candy and chocolate. It, we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus today. Yeah, okay, so what does that have to do with the bunnies, though? Where are the bunnies? Not. No. Okay. no. Ah. <sighs> I'm sorry, where was I? Uh. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming to Kids Church today because we are talking about the real story of Jesus' resurrection. Morning, kids. Mr. Mike here. Raise your hand. I want to talk to you today. I'd like you to raise your hand if you like chocolate or if any of you have one of these at home. Any of you have one of these? Raise your hand if you have one of these. A couple of hands there. All right. Well, there's nothing wrong with chocolate. Chocolate is delicious and it's tasty. There's nothing wrong with candy, actually. Candy is actually one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And I want to talk to you about Easter is way more than just about the candy. It's about God's plan to save us from our sins. That's why he came. That's why he died. And that's why he rose again to show what God can and what God will do in our lives. Now, I like rabbits. I like rabbits as much as the next guy. In fact, there you Come on. There you go. I like rabbits so much we have one. This is Ping Pong. This is our family rabbit. Say hello, Ping Pong. You know what? The Easter story, it's not about rabbits. The Easter story is not about you, is it? No, the Easter story is not about it. I speak rabbit. It's not about rabbits, and it's not about the eggs, and it's not about the chocolate. You had rabbits and eggs and... Rabbits don't, you don't lay eggs, do you? No, she doesn't lay eggs either. But the story about Easter is about way more than just rabbits, eggs, and candy and chocolate. Way more. So I like rabbits as much as the next guy. But the meaning of Easter, it's not about the rabbits. It's not about the rabbits, ping pong. When we forget the meaning of, the true meaning of Easter, the message becomes hollow. Now, who knows what hollow means? Anybody? Sam, Dan, Dan. There's Ann back there. All right. Hollow. That's right. Hollow means that it's empty on the inside. Now, you remember our, remember our chocolate rabbit? Let me show you something here. It's down. Yeah. Let me show you something, and you might be pretty surprised. Get that out. I've got my rabbit on the table, and I have my mallet. Close your eyes, Ben. Would you look at that? This rabbit is hollow. That means there's nothing on the inside of that rabbit. I have a chocolate cross. Take a look at this cross. You might be surprised about this cross. Look at this cross over here. Let's just get that cross. On three, one, two. Three, look at that cross. That cross is not hollow. That cross is solid on the inside. But Jesus died a long, long time ago, and the message is strong because of the journey to the cross, we can be saved. That his death and his resurrection brings hope. We don't celebrate the rabbit at Easter. We celebrate the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. The only hollow thing that we celebrate at Easter is the empty tomb of Jesus. And all God's people said, hallelujah. Okay, say, it's time for you to go get your Bible, a pen and a paper.
And uh, we're going to look up our scripture memory verse for today. Okay, welcome back. I want you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter 11, verse 25. Okay, did you find John eleven twenty five? Underline it, okay? So that we remember it when we flip through the Bible, we will find that verse. Here's what that verse says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live after dying. Wow. I'd like you to say that verse with me, and then we're going to talk about it a minute. So on the count of three, starting with our address, John, say it with me. One, two, three. John eleven twenty five. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live after dying. That's a huge promise. You know, we've been talking in the past couple weeks about our spiritual bodies and our natural bodies. When God made Adam and Eve, when he made Adam, he formed him out of the dust and the dirt out of the ground, but Adam wasn't alive yet. It says God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So when God breathed into him, it wasn't just air to fill his lungs. It was a spiritual body that he gave him to something inside and we have talked about this uh, in the past couple of weeks matter of fact I have a couple of props just to remind us of that we talked about how we have spiritual ears it's not these kind of ears that you hear God audibly but when God made Adam he gave him a spirit he put spiritual ears inside of him so that he could communicate with God so that he could hear him in his spirit. God put a spirit inside of us. We're not just a body. We have a spiritual being inside of us. We are a spiritual being. And we can communicate with God. We can listen to him. A few weeks ago, we talked about the red light, the green light, and the yellow light. Well, that's one way that we know that God is talking to us. You know, we are alive both physically and spiritually. Do you know what? Adam and Eve had a sin problem. Remember, they disobeyed God when they took uh, the suggestion of Satan and a snake form to eat from that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And at that point, sin came into the garden and they were separated from God. We've all been separated from God because we all have a sin problem. Our spiritual bodies, though, are going to live forever one way or the other. You know, I have something I'd like to share with you. When I was 17 years old, my daddy died. It was a horrible, traumatic time. My whole world was rocked. But you know, the one thing that helped me through that horrible, terrible time was I knew that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And because my daddy believed in Jesus, one day I would see Jesus and I would see my father. And that gave me hope. You know, Jesus' promises never, ever fail. 
and he is there for us. And one day, if we know Jesus in our spirits, we will see him. And all the people who have died before us that love Jesus, they will be resurrected with a brand new body. It's going to be exciting. It's a wonderful promise. So now I want you to say this verse with me one more time, and then we're going to do something a little different. So on the count of three, starting with the address, one, two, three, John eleven twenty five. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live after dying. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We like to do this sometimes in kids' church. It's called Memory Verse the Popcorn Style. So what that is, is and get your family involved in this. Every other word, you're going to be sitting down, and then you're going to jump up. Sit down, jump up. So are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live after dying. Good job. After Jesus died, a few of his friends, including a woman named Mary, took his body, wrapped it in linen clothes, and placed it in a tomb near the city. It was a very sad and confusing time for Jesus' friends, especially Mary. She was heartbroken. This was the man that she had followed and dedicated her life to. He had taught her everything she knew about God. She remembered the first time she met Jesus. Some angry men wanted to kill her for something she had done wrong. They brought her to Jesus, and instead of being angry with her, he loved and forgave her. She believed with all of her heart that Jesus was God's son and he was going to save the world. But now he was dead and like the rest of Jesus' friends, she didn't know what to believe anymore. How could this happen, they questioned. What are we supposed to do now? This isn't how it was supposed to end, they thought to themselves. The religious leaders, on the other hand, were thrilled. We have finally gotten rid of Jesus, they said. And just to make sure that none of his followers would try to come and take his body, they sent soldiers to guard his tomb. And they rolled a huge stone in front of the door of the tomb so that no one could get in or out. Early on Sunday morning, just before sunrise, Mary and some of the other women who knew Jesus went to visit his tomb one last time. Even though it was a beautiful morning, it didn't feel that way to Mary. She walked along the road to the tomb in sad silence as she remembered her best friend and how much she missed him. As Mary and her friends approached the tomb, they noticed something was different. The giant stone that had sealed the tomb was no longer in front of the door. It had been rolled to the side and the door was open. The soldiers who were supposed to be guarding the tomb were nowhere to be found. The women were perplexed and they cautiously took a peek inside, not knowing what they would see. As she looked inside, Mary noticed there was something missing. Jesus' body was not where they had laid it three days earlier. In fact, his body wasn't there at all. It was gone. Mary was about to shout for help, but before she had time to say anything, someone in bright, shining clothes appeared before her. It was an angel, and he asked the women, Why are you here? Tombs are for the dead, but Jesus is alive. Mary and her friends couldn't believe what they were hearing. They thought, could this really be true? Is Jesus really alive? They wanted to believe what the angel said, but they still had so many questions like, if he is alive, then where is he? Why haven't we seen him yet? The women turned and started to run back home to tell everybody the amazing things they had heard. But Mary stopped. She saw someone off in the distance. That must be the gardener, she thought. I'll go find out if he's seen Jesus. As she got closer, Mary called out to him, Sir, I'm looking for someone who was buried in this tomb, but I can't find him. Have you seen him? she asked. Mary, he said. That's strange, thought Mary. I know that voice. I've heard it many times before. It's... it's... 
Jesus! She screamed excitedly. Her heart felt like it was going to jump out of her chest. But, but how is this possible, she thought. She was there when he was crucified. She saw him take his last breath on the cross just three days earlier. She even helped wrap his body and watched as they placed it in the tomb. But it was Jesus. He was standing there right in front of her. She fell to the ground and began crying tears of joy at the sight of seeing her best friend alive again. She wanted to jump up and give Jesus a big hug. You can hug me later, Mary, Jesus said, but now you need to go tell everyone else that I'm alive. Mary took off running as fast as she could down the same path, over the same hills and by the same trees that she had passed that morning. But now she didn't feel sad. In fact, everything looked different. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, the flowers were blooming, and Jesus was alive again. She couldn't wait to tell her friends that everything he said was true. He really is the Son of God. They're not going to believe it, she said to herself. This changes everything. And she was right. Everything had changed. Jesus and his father had done it. Their plan worked. They beat sin, they beat death, and they had made a way for all of God's children to be with him again forever. When I say the word empty, what do you think of when I say the word empty? It's kind of a negative word, isn't it? Empty. It's kind of negative. It has a negative feel to it. And like, for example, when I got up in the morning, this morning, to get myself some cereal, and I went to get the milk, this is what I found. The milk jug was empty. That's right. I wonder who did that. Probably Joan. After that, I had to go to get some toilet paper. Because we all know at this time, toilet paper is kind of a big deal. And I drove to the store and I went to get some toilet paper. Because my toilet paper roll at home when I went to get toilet paper was empty. That's right, it was empty. So I went to the store and I went to find some toilet paper. And when I got to the store and I went down the toilet paper aisle and I looked at the shelves, what do you think the shelves look like? Anybody? You in the back. That's right, it was empty. I went to another store. When I got to that store, I found the last roll of toilet paper. And although the parents said, I took the toilet paper, I went to the cashier to check out, pull out my wallet, get the old wallet, to buy my toilet paper, open my wallet, and find out that my wallet is empty. Uh, I was able to pay for it, though. Got in the car, went home. And you know what? I completely forgot to go to the gas station. Well, I guess what I found out. The gas tank in my car was empty. Empty is not a great feeling, and it's not a great word. Sometimes even our lives can feel empty. Maybe we've been... We've been picked on or we just didn't do very well in school and we just feel really down that day. Our whole life kind of feels empty inside. The amazing thing, there is one amazing thing that we can say that was empty and it was Jesus's tomb. On Easter Sunday, they found his tomb was empty. He was raised on that Sunday to prove that he was the resurrection and the life. That's why he came. That's why he lived, that's why he died, and that's why he rose again, so that you would have hope and a future and a life, a full life. And best of all, you would have a life in heaven with Jesus Christ, because Jesus wants you to have a full, a wonderful, and a forgiven life. Amen. Happy Easter. I'm glad we're back today. I want to tell you about God. God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. And Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, and he raised from the grave so that we can, can, be, can have eternal life and live with him forever in heaven. It's a great thing to talk about because God is the one who will set you free from sin.
and sin is the bad stuff we do, and the bad stuff we think, and the bad stuff we say, and the bad stuff we do, and the bad stuff we say, like lying and not being truthful. Sin is just on our heart, but God takes it and puts it on his own son while he's dying on the cross. He took our sin so that we can live with him for Ever. And that's amazing. It's amazing that God takes our sin and gives it to and gives it to Jesus. And Jesus dies on the cross and graves from the grave. And he and we can have eternal life with him. That's crazy. But the, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that because I know I love Jesus. I just love you and I want to say goodbye. Goodbye. Wow, that little girl really preached a message about Jesus, didn't she? You know, we all have a sin problem. We talked about that earlier. Uh, some people think that they have to earn Jesus' forgiveness. You know, we could never earn it. We couldn't do enough good things to earn Jesus' forgiveness. And if we had decided that we could earn our own salvation by being good and doing good works, then it would make Jesus' sacrifice worthless. See, God sent his son Jesus to the world because he loves us so much. And he is the only way that we can live forever and ever. It's kind of like this. The Bible says that Jesus came to give us a gift of eternal life. Now, we have options. Did you know that? We can receive the gift from Jesus and say, Yes, Jesus, I want you in my life. I need you. I need forgiveness. I want to live forever with you. Or we can say, I don't need him. I can figure it out myself. Do you ever wonder what God might think about you rejecting his perfect gift, Jesus? I mean, he let his son die a horrible death for our sins. But he didn't keep him dead, did he? He raised him from the dead so that we can have hope that no matter what we go through, if our hearts belong to Jesus, we receive his gift of salvation for heaven and eternity and for salvation here on earth. When we receive Jesus, it's more than thinking, oh, someday I will be in heaven with Jesus. When we receive Jesus, it's he's here now to forgive me of my sins, to help me with my problems, to bless me, to be uh, more and more like him. So here's the choice. You can receive the gift or you can get rid of it. The choice is up to you. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. Would you close your eyes so you're not distracted and pray this prayer after me? And I want to remind you that just because you pray a prayer that you're repeating, doesn't mean a whole lot unless your heart means it. It'd be kind of like saying, Mary had a little lamb, his fleece was white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It means nothing unless you believe it in your heart. So close your eyes and let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for taking away the sins of the world. Now, I know that I need you. I need your gift of salvation. So I ask you to come into my heart, to forgive me of my sins, to change me. Thank you that you are the resurrection and the life. I look forward to seeing you in heaven 
that I also look forward to knowing you here on earth. In your holy name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, why don't you let your parents know? Or let me know? Or Pastor Allen? Or some adult who knows Jesus? Because we would love to talk to you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. Are 
way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. May you have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you. And remember, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor depth, nor height, nor any created thing, nor anything else in all creation, nor coronavirus, nor disease, will we'll be able to separate us, able to separate us, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. No guilt, no shame, no sin, no stain is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave, no other name is greater than the great I am. No guilt, no shame, no sin, no stain is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave, no other name is greater than the great Greater than the mountain that's in front of me, you are greater, you're so much greater. Greater than the power of the enemy, you are greater, you're so much greater. Greater than the mountain that's in front of me you are greater you're so much greater greater than the power of the enemy you are greater you're so much greater greater than the mountain that's in front of me you are greater, you're so much greater.